Hi, this is Brendan with Cusack Prep, and you are here because you are cramming for the ACT reading section and you don't know what to do. So if the test is tomorrow, maybe it's later this week, uh, I'd say reading is one of the more difficult sections to try to cram for, but let's try to give you a few tips, maybe help you out a little bit. So when cramming for the ECT reading section, really the first thing you're going to want to focus on is your pacing as you take a practice test. Now the reading section is 40 questions and about 35 minutes, and you have just under 9 minutes per passage. So if you're taking it tomorrow or later this week, you really want to try to get a sense of what 9, minute, nine minutes feels like as you go through a reading passage. Uh, the reason you want to do this is you want to avoid running out of time as you take it. So just having a sense as to what the appropriate pacing is before you go in to take the test tomorrow will be very helpful for you. After that, one of the really truly great techniques for the reading section is to try to create your own answer. Meaning when you read the question, maybe it asks you what is the main idea, you want to think about what the main idea is rather than just going straight to reading the answer choices. The ACT and the SAT, the, the readers design the answer choices, especially the incorrect ones, to be appealing. They want you to pick the wrong answer, and so when they put these wrong answers in there, they're thinking, what might you miss? What mistake are you likely to make? By creating your own answer and coming up with the answer to the main idea question before you look at the answer choices, you're not going to allow yourself to be biased by the incorrect answers that are there. Once you get a bad idea in your head, it's pretty hard to get it out. I think we all know that from personal experience in life. Once you've come up with that own answer choice, you're going to want to try to match that answer choice to the answer choice that's given that best matches what you came up with. And finally, the last tip is to try to understand what are the common wrong answer traps. These are just kind of a few, and if you go online, you can Google a ton of different lists, and everyone has a, a different way of describing these wrong answer traps. But this is the way the writers of the ACT try to trick you. They try to put answers that are meant to be confusing. One of those wrong answer types is half right, half wrong. Maybe you have two statements that are given in the answer, and one of them's right, but the other one's wrong. Uh, obviously. And if you um, kind of come to understand that that's a common wrong answer choice, you're not going to be biased towards picking that answer because you see that half of it's right. Another wrong answer trap is this idea of a confused relationship. A uh, confused relationship is going to be something like you have an author of a passage who's writing in the first person, and that author quotes someone. Maybe they're quoting a uh, professor from Carnegie Mellon University. And one of the wrong answer choices on a question that maybe asks you about the author's opinion is going to quote the professor's opinion. And it's really easy to mix that up because you know someone thought that particular thought or idea, but it actually wasn't the person who they're asking for. So you want to be very careful of that and make sure that you are able to attribute the answer to a specific author or a person that's quoted in the passage. Other wrong answer choices might be a little bit too specific. Question could be asking what the main idea of the passage is, but then it's uh, providing an answer that's really just the main idea of maybe the third paragraph or the fourth paragraph. Um, and that can be tempting again because that's usually one of the later choices that, you know, the later parts of the passage that you have read. On the flip side of that, we can have something that's too broad. Maybe it's asking for a specific detail, but one of the answer choices uh, gives you the main idea. A uh, question can also be true, but actually not answer the question. So this is where they give a fact that's presented somewhere within the passage. It actually very closely relates to the, the last answer choice, wording directly from the passage. Uh, they like to use words that are specifically mentioned in the passage, but aren't actually answering the question that is uh, being asked. And finally, we have the wrong answer choices that are off by one or two words. Um, an example of this might be that an individual in the passage is a huge fan of uh, Mark Twain. And because they are an avid fan of Mark Twain, an answer choice that says that this person really enjoyed reading Mark Twain's biography uh, might seem tempting because a person who is a big fan of Mark Twain probably would enjoy reading the biography of Mark Twain. However, there's nothing in the passage to say that that individual actually read the biography or has any connection to them. And that's another kind of one of the ways that they can trick you. 
So just being aware of these traps and this idea that you can anticipate the answer choice is good. It's going to help you on test day. However, what would be better is if you could maybe find a practice test, read through some of the sections, grade yourself, and try to see are you falling for any of these wrong answer traps. If you answered question seven wrong and you got it wrong because you picked the one that was off by two words, like the Mark Twain example that I just gave, you kind of start to recognize that there's usually a pattern in the kind of traps that you're susceptible to and you're falling a trap to. And if you can come to understand those and understand your weaknesses and then grow from them, you're ultimately going to be able to do better when you take the test. So just being aware of these can oftentimes help students gain maybe, you know, a couple of points. Um, and that's really the goal of this, this series is to try to get you maybe two more points. It usually takes a little bit longer to, to gain anything more, but just help you out on that end. Hope you found this video helpful. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe, share it with all your friends, and good luck tomorrow if you're really studying for this test last minute. I uh, hope you do well.